I do know Matt's trying to get in. He's, okay. I think I'll, I'll, he just, I just sent in, text I'll, him. Hold on a minute. It's, yeah, okay. yeah. Um, anyhow, um, Amy, if you don't mind just talking briefly about some of the changes that have happened, because there's been a lot and a lot more to come. Yeah, um, well, we have the new lead system, which is ILC Integrity Lead Center. So CRM is no longer um, how it was. You cannot access it. It is not there. Um, and the way that you access ILC is through what we call Gateway. Um, Gateway is going to be the hub for, we're trying to, they're trying to get it to where it's basically that's how you access everything. So right now you can access HCMS through Gateway and you access ILC through Gateway. There's a Assurance Bay link in Gateway. Um, if you all haven't logged in to it yet, it's the same password as you would use for HCMS. Um, there's a lot of posts in Slack. Um, I've been getting a lot of questions about it, but I mean, all of the information is in Slack. Um, you can still reach out to me. Um, I'll probably direct you back to Slack because that's where the information is. But I did pin a post in the Genesis thread that has information about Gateway and ILC. So there's obviously other information in there, um, but the main things that um, you know we obviously are focusing on is the ILC, HCMS, and then the Assurance Bay link. Um, it also has on the left hand side you can see it also has links to the apparel store um, marketing. And then uh, when new things come, we will add more to that left side. Um, once we get the new app for contracting, we're supposed to have a link for that in there. And um, I don't know, I think that's about it um, that I can think of. Does anybody have any questions on the new lead system? Um, I know some of you are having issues getting your leads, um, that information is in Slack as well in the pin post. Um, but yeah, if you guys have any questions about it, just let me know. Um, so we just wanna ask you guys, because, and, and it's okay if you do reach out, but here's the other side of it. Like some of the questions that we're getting from people, <clears throat> excuse me, some of the questions that we're getting from people, if they would literally just look at their Slack, like a lot of times it was the last thing that was posted so I'm just asking that you guys, we're, of course we're here to help, but just asking if you guys could talk to your agents and just say, hey, take a look at Slack, whatever you have. I mean, if they were to get on the Slack and just swipe once or twice, the question that they have is gonna be out there. Um, you know, I've, I've put out multiple messages. I know Home Office has or whatever, but um, you know, if you could take the time to do that, take the time to have your, you know, talk to your guys, say, hey, just take a look at Slack, take a look at your email. There's been stuff that's, that's sent out. The other part of this is to obviously, guys, this is an integration or migration or data dump, whatever you want to call it, from one software system to the next, right? So from that perspective, I mean, you can see, as Amy just eloquently mentioned, HCMS, Assurance Bay, ILC, um, all of that stuff, everything is all in one place now. So obviously, you guys know, or if you guys have worked at companies before that have had migration from one system to the next, it takes time. So keep in mind that not everything is in here, right? You don't have, and, and I hate to even bring this up, but like a Royal Neighbors, well, it's a paper app first and those kind of things. So, or some of the companies that you had like a Prosperity, not all the carriers are going to be in here yet. So keep that in mind when you're looking at your numbers, if it's not digitally put in here, then it's, you're not gonna see it. So just keep that in mind. So for now, until they get all of the migration done and all the data in here, what you wanna go off of for numbers is, the issue pay report. If you are not in leadership, which means you don't have people on your team that you're leading and coaching and developing and all that kind of stuff, you can always reach out to somebody in the leadership team that, that you're part of, and they can give you your numbers, issue pay for the year, month, last week, whatever the case is. That data comes out either Wednesday or Thursday, so we should typically get it today, but it's been Thursday for the most part, and I'm sure it's because of all the numbers and those kind of things. So just poke around with this. It's really, really good. It's a lot of good information out there, but just make sure, because I know we're going to have people that ask, uh, why those my numbers don't look right. Those aren't my numbers. The real numbers are on the IP report, which you can get from, or get the data, if you will, from a leadership person. Uh, we placed, I even had people ask, how do we get into it? I think I've posted this almost every day for maybe a week, week and a half, <clears throat> that this stuff is coming in the link. It's actually out here on the Genesis, FFL Genesis page. 
under portal. Um, the reason we changed that from saying leads and all that kind of stuff, because everything is in the portal now, the gateway portal. Does anybody have any questions before we move forward? Hey, can you go to the pin, like show how to get to the pin post? And I don't know if anybody, if people don't know that or. Are you talking about on Slack? In Slack, yes, the pin post. Oh, I, I was like, wow, well, I was going to say, yeah. she got to be. Okay, hold on. That's weird that my screen is doing that. Maybe I need to go ahead and post this. I was going to post after the meeting. Okay. Walk me through it, Amy. Just go up to the top and click on, yeah. Pin messages. Pin messages. Yep. So there's the link right there. It you, If you expand it, it talks about, um, you know, what to do if you can't find your leads. Um, so yeah, so you should be good. Good there. Yep. Hopefully everybody saw that. Where it just says Genesis 123 members. I simply clicked on that. And then you can see the messages are pinned if you go to that. And even if the messages are updated, so if Amy were to go back in there and update that, it's gonna put the most update information. Case in point, uh, she had updated the, <clears throat> the meeting schedule. And when I changed it, even it says when right there, she pinned it. So when I changed that <clears throat> yesterday and put that in there, you can see it was updated. Actually, I did that last week, but any questions? Perfect. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. I come out of here and stop sharing. Okay, make sure I didn't lose everybody because, you know. All right, guys, so what we're going to cover in our typical fashion uh, in our process uh, websites, comp level, prosperity, Slack, ENO, boot camp, AML, and then of course, work spots. So, can anybody tell me what work spots is, how much it costs, and why it's important? Anybody? <clears throat> Okay. All right. I'll do it every week. I'll do it this week. Too. Yeah, go ahead, Mark. Thank you. <laughs> All right. WorkSpots is an app uh, that gives you access to other FFL offices all over the country for $99 a month. It also gives you access to lead discounts, which will offset your $90 a month payment if you're buying any leads whatsoever. Um, and here's something else new. Uh, if you actually have a WorkSpots location, a physical office, and set yourself up on WorkSpots, you pay the $99 a month, but you still get access to all the benefits and you can have income off of it. Uh, you get a split on the $99 a month. So there's a little right. extra for you. Absolutely. Thank you, Mark. And you've covered it very well. And that 99 bucks a month, guys, is a write-off, just like anything else like you buying leads. Thank you, Mark. AML, anti-money laundering. Can anybody tell me what that is and why you need it? And AML. All right, you guys are asleep this morning. Anti-money laundering. It basically, what AML or anti-money laundering is to make sure that you understand if you get a physical check from someone or uh, but you're essentially not going to steal from people. Uh, you're not going to take your banking information and do anything with it other than what you're doing in that, uh, that process of getting them covered with insurance or annuities. Prosperity has their own that you have to complete. And now that cryptocurrency is becoming very popular, there are companies that are starting to take cryptocurrency as monthly, semi-monthly, or monthly, bi-monthly, semi-annual, whatever the case, annual uh, payments. Some carriers are going to require you to take an abbreviated or modified AML course so that you can catch up with that, so that you know what the rules are with that. But simply AML, guys, is just to make sure that you understand that the companies have taken you through a course not to steal or take people's money. That's all it is. Uh, we've got several options for anti-money laundering. Uh, the one that has uh, turned into pretty much the universal one is WebCE. It is on our website, on the FFL Genesis site under WebCE. When you click on it, it takes you directly to the portion of their site for AML. You simply find your state, pay the fee, take the course. It's very simple. We're seeing fees for that anywhere between $9 to $15, depends upon the state that you're in, but they're very simple courses. Now, here's a pro tip for you guys, if you haven't done this or you're recruiting and bringing people on, make sure when they complete that course with WebCE that they save their certificate. They don't just log out of the system. They saved a certificate because that's something they're gonna have to upload into the system. However, we're supposed to do that now, uh, that they're gonna upload into the system 
uh, moving forward. Again, nine bucks to $15. Anybody have any questions about AML? I do. So on, on, on WebC, so I did it in 2021 or 2020. And then I did it again just in December. But when I did it, it came back and shot back and said, in the state of Missouri, you can't take it. It was something I forgot. It said something like, oh, you can't take it in the same, like same year or something. And it was odd, but then I've been using it for all of my carriers and they're accepting it. So I have to find the email, but okay, you use just WebCE, ignored right? it. What'd you say? You use Web CE? Yeah, because I used it both okay. twice in 2020 and 2021. And then it came back saying, hey, in the state of Missouri, you can't, you, like within, I think like the same year or something, you can't be taking the same test through Web CE. Like it has to be something right. different. So I didn't know. Um, I didn't run into that, but the one that I took had cryptocurrency it attached to it. Um, I have not run into that, so I don't want to give you the wrong information. But I know typically with CE credits, that's not what this is per, per, uh, per se, but with CE credits, typically you can't, the same course won't count in the same two-year time period. And that's right, what yeah. I think they might be saying. Um, that just as a thank you, Christy. Uh, and you mind, I don't know the answer to that and the, other than, they don't want you to take the same course within the same period of time, but um, AML is not is not considered CE, so that kind of doesn't make any sense. So yeah. I, don't I mean, so far it. it's worked. Any of the companies that's yeah. asked me for it, or it's been you know, so I thought, well, until they ask me again, <laughs> I'm just leaving. Right. It. Well, one of the good things about Web CE guys is it is it, they've been around for a long time, so they're universal. A lot of the carriers know who they are, and if they sign up to have access to the Web CE portal, a lot of the times what happens is they can go in and look into the portal and see if you've done it. That's why a lot of the times with some of these companies, you don't have to send a certificate. They know what's in there and, and WebCE will send it on your behalf. But you definitely need to take a screenshot and save it somewhere just in case you need to upload it to a carrier. That's a good question. All right, anybody else have any questions about AML, also known as anti-money laundering? Perfect. Any questions about WebCE? All right, so Prosperity has their own. Uh, I just had to do one for me to Omaha, which they sent to me saying, hey, please do this one, which had cryptocurrency in it. So keep in mind that may be coming. You can do it directly through. You can click through but the link that Mutual of Omaha does. Again, save your certificate. Actually, they sent the certificate on my behalf and told me because Mutual of Omaha requested that information. All right, boot camp. Can anybody tell me uh, where to find a boot camp and why it's important? And when should your agents, uh, when should you give them access to bootcamp? You can find it on the Genesis site. And as soon, like if they don't have their license, make wait until they pass their test and then do bootcamp. Don't do it before. Yep. Um, and then why, well, why it's important because it will answer a lot of your questions. And so instead of just jumping right into it, so it kind of goes through, um, I mean, it goes through everything from leads to in home to um you know basically the whole process yep. i will tell you guys and i know we talk about this every week but i have new agents that call and ask me questions all the time um and i have to watch myself so i don't sound like i'm getting irritated but i know if they've gone through the boot camp or not just by some of the questions that they ask you know in-home questions where do i find this where do, how do i find that um, what do I do with this? Like, they don't know what the in-home form is, you know, the credibility, all that stuff. They have no idea. And I'm like, you're dead. you don't know that because you didn't go through it. Um, if you were to go to a job that's paying you 10, 12, 15 bucks an hour and they say, go through this, you do it. Uh, so, you know, if you do it for them, do it for yourself because you're just going to make this hard on yourself by not completing the boot camp. And I, the people I work with, I know who did it or didn't go by just by the questions they ask. Very important. Thank you, Christy. Era and omissions, ENO. Can anybody explain to me where to find uh, the information for ENO and what ENO is for? Era and omissions just covers you if you make a mistake uh, on something and somebody tries to sue you. That's essentially what it's for. Uh, the chance of you using your Aaron and omissions and life insurance is very, very low, especially if you're doing the right thing. It's almost non-existent. Uh, it's very inexpensive. Again, on the FFL Genesis website, we have it. I think it's in the same, same place as the AML. I think it's right across from it. Uh, you simply click on there. FFL has a company that they've partnered with. On our site, I believe it's 360. 
They are the least expensive that I found uh, for ENO carriers. Uh, and you can get a million, $2 million worth of coverage. And again, it's very, very inexpensive. So that's error and omissions. Covers you if you have an error or omit something that you should have told a client, et cetera. Anybody have any questions on E and O? Perfect. All right, Slack. Can anybody tell me the importance of Slack when you add your agent to Slack? Um, right away, as soon as, as soon as they filled out the onboarding, and if they don't get added to Slack, guess what they do? They Slack. So that's what, <laughs> yeah. So it's just part of communication. Then they get to see what people are, you know, posting, gets them eager to get going faster. Um, so, yeah. So, I mean, everything's on there for them. And another thing too, if anybody doesn't know this, so I know you guys talk about pins, but how I find things on there is I do go on the search. So when I had questions on NLG, like I typed in NLG in the search and then it will bring up so I can see who are people who are submitting NLG, for instance. And so I had a question. So I went to, I basically sent a message to all those people. <laughs> like, I mean, I just yeah. picked like three or four and that's how certain topics, if I don't know, I just put it in the search and then it will bring it up. And I think I had something in home that I needed help with. And that's what I did is that it was like an odd one. And I put, oh, it was marijuana was another one. I put marijuana and then all the questions that people asked about marijuana popped up. And it's so easy to get, that's the whole point of Slack. Thank you for sharing that, Christy, because I always forget that feature. And it's just top left-hand corner, right, Christy? You just type in whatever you're looking for. And it's everybody that's in the Velocity ecosystem. So basically, yeah. I'll say 10,000 people, because um, it is, I think that it is showing that many. But you put that in, anything that's been put in there with NLG will come up. So you can look and see, well, gosh, uh, what's her name? Oh, my God. Um, Renee. Renee sells a lot of NLG. So you're going to see her sales. You're going to see questions. You can reach out to Renee because it looks like she sells a lot of NLG. Save yourself the time. So, so real that's quick, awesome. In, real yeah. quick, in case you guys are wondering, up at the top, it says search FFL velocity. So it might not be on the left side, depending on what device, device. you're on. On my computer, it's right in the middle like a search bar would be like a Google yeah. search bar. It's right under it. It says search FFL velocity. So you type anything in and it's going to pull up whatever related to that subject. So yeah, mine's in the middle too. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you guys. Okay. Uh, let's see. Prosperity. Prosperity is one that you will send directly to your agent, your new teammates when they come on. Again, Prosperity has their own. Um, AML, anti-money laundering that you will take. You cannot use WebCE. Uh, you'll go through and complete it's just a series of videos. Once the videos are over, you're done. You don't have to take a quiz or test or anything like that that I'm aware of unless they changed it. Um, from that perspective, just going through the system, we do have a video on our YouTube page. So if you go out there and type in FFL Genesis uh, Prosperity, the video will come up. We'll walk you through everything that you need to know from there. Any questions on Prosperity? Perfect. Can anybody tell me what uh, what spread your commission spread uh, is? I guess I should say kosher if somebody is not licensed and you're going to be uh, partnering with them. Ten to fifteen percent. Yep, ten to fifteen percent. I could I would say, guys, you could if they're not licensed, you could even go fifteen to twenty. Here's why: you're going to be spending time, especially if you're going to be helping them with leads and all that kind of stuff. Um, here's why I say that's important. If you're going to put a 20% split or more bet between yourself and your, your new teammate, uh, make sure that you're helping them, right? Not just, oh, you got high comp, figure that out. I don't believe in that. I don't think that that just doesn't make any sense to me. But put a parameter in place. When you sell your first 10,000 issue paid, I'm going to give you a 5% bump. When you sell your first 20, 15 or 20,000, I'm going to give you another 5% bump. 10% is a good split to have between yourself and somebody that's writing because you're going to be more apt to help them if there's actually some uh, financial incentive, right? Not just from your heart, but some actual financial incentive is the first thing. And then the second thing is with that kind of spread, you're still going to have enough comp spread where it's going to make sense for them and they'll have a high enough compensation as well. So I'd say as high as 20, I would give 10 back when they hit those two thresholds. Keep 10% for yourself because there are still going to be questions and go from there. If they are licensed, and thank you, by the way, Brandy, um, if they are licensed, I would say 10 to 15% once they hit their first 10, 15,000, whatever you want to do, 
give them additional 5% increase, keep the 10 and keep moving from there. That way there's enough spread for them to recruit, but also enough spread for you where you're having, uh, you're able to have a decent uh, income, if you will, for assisting that person and then moving forward from there. Any questions there? Very good. All right, so uh, let's go ahead and move through the process. I mean, we're flying today. Go ahead and move through the process. Nobody has any questions. Um, Amy, if you don't mind, since everything is in the same place now on ILC or Gateway, is there anything different that we need to have the guys do once they get somebody set up? Really the only difference is now um, we don't have to add anyone to the CRM. Um, obviously again, the CRM is not here. So what happens when um, an agent is brought on who is licensed, we will add them to HCMS through Gateway as we normally would. And then the system Gateway will kick out a link to them for um, ILC and for Surance Bay. So the system is doing it for us. So no longer do we have to add agents to CRM um, to access leads. So that's really the only difference is once we add them to HCMS, the system kicks out the links. Um, but other than that, there's really no different, nothing different. Awesome. <clears throat> so to wrap this up, guys, you meet with your new candidate. Uh, you both decide that it makes sense for them to come on board. Um, they decide to come on board and you send them the information or excuse me, you go onto the FFL Genesis website and you complete the onboarding form. Everybody should know where that's at now. If not, just simply go on to FFL Genesis, look for onboarding form, complete the form. First name, middle name, last name, et cetera. You'll see the information listed on there. Then once that happens, that information is sent through the onboarding form. It comes through Amy and I both see it. Trust me when I tell you, Amy does all the work. It comes in. Amy then sends out a welcome email. She sends out the welcome email. If they are licensed, there's a second email if they are not licensed. So let's say the first one, uh, he or she is not licensed. What they're going to do is get the information from uh, Excel Solutions, and there's going to be a discount code in there. Okay, it's just a quick welcome email going through some steps. Now, obviously, there are some changes of some things that are going to be coming up here very soon, what's called next level um, that FFL is putting in place. Uh, within 24 hours, some a new agent could have AMAM, AIG, and America. I believe those are the three carriers. I uh, have those three carriers and be writing with them within 24 hours. So, or at least have their agent code set they can write within 24 hours. And really, if you put those three and then add prosperity to it, they would have four carriers within 24 hours to go out and start writing. So there's no excuses, in my opinion. There wasn't any anyway, but to wait until they get all their carriers. That's coming. So once they do that, they get their welcome email, right? That's it. Give them two weeks to complete the course. If they don't, if I were you, I'd be having conversations with them every couple of days just to make sure they're staying on task and on point because the chance of them coming on board after two weeks, it does happen that they do, but it's slim to none. So save yourself the time. I know some of us follow that, some of us don't, but you can't beat the math or the science with that. Now, same scenario, except this person that you talked to is licensed. Again, you're going to complete the form. You're going to put all of their information if they have, the, well, you need their NPN number in order for them to be able to get access and have, uh, have access to the system, et cetera. Complete all the information. It comes in back into Amy and I. Amy then sends out the welcome email. This welcome email is for a licensed person, which will have different information, right? So they're going to go in, they're going to complete HCMS. They're going to get a second email from HCMS, basically congratulating them for doing that. And then the third email is going to send them a link to Surance Bay. Keep in mind, all these things are subject to change here in the next, let's call it 30 to 60 days. But right now, everything's the same. They're going to complete Surance Bay. Uh, excuse me, they're going to give a link for, to Surance Bay. When Insurance Bay, can anybody tell me the three carriers and only three carriers that they're going to apply for inside of Insurance Bay? America, AIG. Oh. <laughs> uh, yeah, America, AIG, and Mutual of Omaha. That's exactly right. Thank you, Ryan. Miracle AIG Mutual of Omaha, and then you would have sent them prosperity. Those are the only three. So please make sure that they understand that. Walk them through it. And that's why when I do my interviews and we get to that point, I literally put the stuff on the screen. If I'm with them in person, I show them exactly what it looks like. I show them Excel. 
um, and go through that stuff with them. So it's not the first time they've seen it. If you don't do it, then you're going to do it later because they're going to pick up the phone and call you because they're going to be confused. If they go on the insurance bay and they just click all the buttons down the, down the uh, form and send it back in, it's going to be declined and they're going to have to do it again. Then they're going to be frustrated and then they're going to call you. It's a waste of time, right? Americo, AIG, Moo, AAM. That's how I've remembered that. And of course, you're going to give them uh, prosperity. Another way to remember that, you guys are going to laugh, but I'm guaranteed you remember it. Prosperity, Americo, AIG, and Moo is PAM, P-A-A-M. So those are the first four they're going to get. All right. Then they're going to go back to HCMS. Remember, they already set themselves up with HCMS after the welcome email that Amy sent out. And they're only going to uh, apply for these carriers. They're going to see other ones, but they're only going to apply for these. AMAM, Foresters, Aetna, John Hancock, Great Western, and Transamerica. They will see other carriers in there, but those are the only ones that they're going to apply for. Does anyone have any questions about that? Okay, perfect. Now, not to confuse things, but if you have agents that are going to be writing in Iowa, Massachusetts, Michigan, New Jersey, Rhode Island, or Vermont, there is a company called Occidental that is a sister company to AMAM, American Amical. You will have to apply for a, uh, uh, Occidental in those six states that I just mentioned. Don't get all caught up in that. If you have that, we'll, we'll help you get through it. It's not difficult at all. The last thing that I will mention about this before we open it back up for questions, um, you're going to hear different things in different states to co cover and protect yourself. If you bring a teammate on that's in another state that's outside of your resident state, you should get a license in that state. That should be your practice. You live in Missouri, you're going to hire somebody or bring somebody on that's in Arkansas, you should get an Arkansas license. It's very simple to do. If you're in Missouri and you're, you're going to uh, bring a teammate on in Kentucky, you should get a Kentucky license to make sure that your overrides are covered. If for some reason you don't do that and that person writes business and then you find out, oh my God, that person wrote, but they are not going to go retro back. You're just going to miss out on that just to let you know. So if Can you I guys do in? that, give everybody on. Uh, yes, go ahead. So um, one of the reasons it's so important that you have a non-resident license wherever your, <clears throat> your agents do is because some carriers, specifically Aetna lately, they will not contract your agent if you're not licensed in their state, their resident state. So if you live in Missouri, you have an agent from Illinois, you have to have an Illinois license or else they will not contract that agent. I don't know why they just started doing that but they did um, at any time other carriers could do that too. So um, if you are hiring and you have agents in other states, it is very important to get your license right away so that it doesn't hold up their contracting. Yeah, and it, it, to be honest with you, it just, it makes sense. Uh, and these come, and the reason I mentioned this guys, there is a form out there. It's a PDF. I've seen it before. I might even have the old version of it. It changes all the time. Um, and I can tell you sometimes if a company has a bunch of agents that are doing that and then they start complaining, they're not getting compensation. That's a waste of labor, waste of time. So if you want to save yourself the headache, if you hire somebody and they're in a different state outside of your resident state, just get the license. If you guys have any questions about how to do that, reach out to your business partner or you guys can reach out to me. I'm happy to quickly answer the, uh, the question there. Thank you, Amy, for uh, all your input today. Uh, much, much appreciated. Guys, this stuff is subject to change as obviously as things are put in place to make this better. Uh, but at the same time, we're here to try to help you guys out, keep this as seamless and simple as possible and help you bring people on. Uh, obviously, there's a big initiative by FFL that's hiring over over a thousand people a week to make sure that we're putting processes in place that work. Uh, but the processes only work if we work the process, right? So you've got new next level stuff coming up. They've now done, a, I think, what looks like an excellent job on the ILC a new onboarding platform and the, you know, all the stuff, putting HCMS and um, all the other things, uh, ILC, putting all that in one place. I think it's awesome. It's going to help the agents. It's going to bring down timidity, fear, and that kind of stuff so they can start protecting families and making money. So Amy, anything else you'd add? Um, just one more thing um, I thought about with um, before when we added agents to the CRM, we added them right when they received the welcome email. So they had access to leads before they even got contracted. Now, the way the system is set up, they won't have access to any leads until they complete their contracting requests. 
um, and then the system will kick that out to them. So that will help to avoid any confusion as to you know, them having access to the leads, but not being able to do, to do anything with them. So when they get that access, it'll be access to the gateway system. And then it's mm -hmm. on the upline, if you will, business partner to go in and walk through that process with them. Yeah. yeah. And I'll make videos here, guys, in the next week or so. Uh, it'll be shorter than that with um, the ILC and that kind of stuff, how to log in and get leads. And you guys can use those videos to pass down to your people if you need to. It'll be, they will be short videos too. All right, these meetings just keep getting faster, which is awesome. Uh, any questions by anybody? Fantastic. Amy, thanks again. Appreciate it. Uh, thank you guys for being on. Thanks for your input. And if you guys need anything, let us know. Bye for now, guys. Finish strong.